It's Thursday, 4 p.m. Central. I'm Fred McMurray, which means this must be... Hey, look at me glowing. <laughs> you are just lit by the angels. <laughs> yes. I feel like my future is so bright. I should be wearing shades. Right? I think you what should. Heck? It'll you rain more shades last week. So I think it's your turn. You could slap them on there. Yeah. Like who would know it's a rainy day in Chicago. It's about to get dark and I'm sitting here with only one little light on. <laughs> It's gl you're glowing from the inside, Kristen. That's what it is. We'll play like a <laughs> cast for the ghost today. <laughs> and hopefully that will improve next week. Anyway, happy Friday Eve, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pillars of Franchising. We've got a great show for you today. And we're going to start by talking about the word on the street. The word on the street. Um, before we yeah. start that, I don't want to forget to remind everyone that we are a call-in show. If you have questions for our guest, Scott Marr of Koala Insulation or any of our Million Dollar Mentors, call us at 323-580-5755 and we will do our best to answer your questions. But Kristen, so this week we are talking a good bit about mentorship. Um, everybody on the show today has had experience either using a mentor or being a mentor. Um, but I think one thing about you, a franchising that is unique, if you're thinking of buying a franchise, if you're a business owner or wanting to become a business owner through franchising, why does it matter if you have someone mentor you who is in franchising or someone who's a business coach? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, I'll tell you, I think the number one differentiator between straight business ownership versus a franchise is you buy a franchise, not only for the brand, but for the support system that comes along with it. So I think that when you are working with a mentor who is familiar with that, I'll call it system, and it doesn't have to be your system, right? But they should, a, a franchise mentor will know what questions to ask your franchisor. They should know what resources, kind of what's out there, you know, like, do you have a business coach? What is your, your marketing team comprised of? What's the marketing targets? So there's a lot of different stuff, I'll call it jargon, if you will, that they can speak to you about that maybe a regular business coach can't. The other thing is, I think that they, um, for example, if I were to work with somebody, it's very clear. I know what some of the franchise or expectations should be. So there's a lot pretty much to get to be a franchisor. You have to have a training plan. You have to have resources for your franchisees, right? So you can't just say, oh, here's my business. I'm going to sell this franchise and not have any support systems. So there's a lot that somebody who's in franchising can talk to you about. Um, they also often can talk to you about K, uh, your key performance indicators or KPIs, right? So in this case, the nice thing with our team, not only do we all do this just to help people, but we all have different backgrounds, right? So if you're in a personal services industry, you know, maybe Jerry's the one you want to talk to about some of those key performance indicators. Ray or I might be somebody that you want to talk to about home services. Karen's more leadership. So everybody has different backgrounds, which I think is great because we can share that. Um, but it's all in franchising, right? So again, we all know what our franchisor should be expected to deliver. And likewise, as a franchisee, what we should be expected to give back to the franchisor. Um, the other thing we could talk about is best practices, growth strategies, um, navigate all of the franchisor provided resources. We talked about that. Um, and I will tell you one thing I want to mention to anybody out there who is looking to become a franchisee or is a franchisee. Um, not only does the SBA have some really good stuff for franchises, but the IFA, International Franchise Association, a um, huge resource that um, I know many, many franchisees do not get involved in. And uh, that, again, is another great place to go looking, whether it's for uh, mentors or whether it's for information about franchisors and, and also franchisee, I'll call them rights, so to speak. Um, so I think those are big differences. Not anybody who owns a regular business knows about a lot of those ins and outs of the franchise um, system. 
My well, and in terms of resources, like you were talking about, why is it important? So for example, a group like Pillars, we have you mentor people through the buying process, sure. but you also have connections and relationships with other people, franchise lenders, franchise oh, yeah. uh, service providers, right. and, you know, adjacent businesses that, that cater to franchising. So talk a little bit about why that's so important. Well, that's actually a really good point that you bring up because let's just take lending since you brought that up. Um, Not all banks will lend to franchise systems. And so um, why that is, I don't know. I think they're really missing the boat on a lot of that. Um, More and more banks are, but there are banks who specialize in franchise lending. They work very closely with the SBA. Um, The other thing, if you look at the resources that we have by being in the industry, Um, whether it's lawyers, like so foolishly, when I first started, I didn't know I needed a franchise lawyer. And I just had a regular lawyer look at my, um, my FDD, the disclosure document. And he was like, yeah, uh, I don't think you can change anything here. So it looks pretty straightforward to me. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that cost me $450 for nothing, right? But if I had a franchise lawyer, he or she may have said, hey, this is something that you could ask to negotiate, right? Whether it be a territory size, whether it be a national marketing fee, things of that nature often can be discussed. Um, and so, you know, we also have a lot of different resources, whether it's, um, you know, you need help in hiring, right? So we've had a lot of people on the show that have businesses specific for franchises that they can help with in the hiring process. We've got great relationships with many companies out there that review franchises on a regular basis, whether it be franchise business review or vetted biz that we can send people to when they have questions about, geez, you know, I'm looking at three different cookie companies, right? Is it, is it uh, crumble cookies or should it be um, insomnia cookies? Like who should I choose? Right? So there's a lot of things that, again, if you're in the industry, you tend to understand where the resources are and how important it is to find that as well as to really validate before you make a purchasing decision. All great information. If you have more questions related to these topics that, that Kristen was discussing today, you can email us at your dream at pillars of franchising.com and we can direct you toward the resources that you need or help you get started buying your franchise. So Kristen, I think it's on with the show. Let's go. Hey, welcome, Scott Meyer with Koala Insulation. Welcome, Scott. Hey, I appreciate y'all having me on today. Well, we're very excited to meet you today. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, Scott, one of the things I'd like to start, if you wouldn't mind, I noticed that you started at a very early age with your entrepreneurial quest. (laughs) So I was wondering if you can tell us just a little bit about that and how that has carried you forward to such great success. Sure, absolutely. Happy to happy to talk about that. <clears throat> I started my first business uh, when I was in high school, when I was 15 years old. Uh, and actually, there was a, a, a brief stint even prior to that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so started started my first business super young. Um, we were in the, the pressure washing business. And I got into that business because a, a friend of mine, uh, his dad sold pressure washers. And, uh, and so he said, oh, you can make a lot of money, you know, pressure washing. And so uh, ended up buying a pressure washer from, uh, from my friend's dad. He had a driver's license. Um, and so we were, uh, we were pressure washers. That's what we did. We went out and we detailed cars and, and motorcycles and, and RVs and boats and all sorts of things. And, um, and then we, uh, we got into doing new construction pressure washing. So of, uh, mm. of new residential homes and things. And so that evolved into what is, uh, what is now a, a national franchise system by the name of Fleet Clean USA. Um, and uh, I ended up selling that business back in 2018. But, uh, but it was a long journey and it was a lot of fun. It taught me a lot about life and, and business and all sorts of things. So how did you get here? I mean, that's so cool. I wish my, I wish my kids would like take my John Deere and start going to the neighbors. Right. I mean, it's a riding mower. Let's go. Right. They just don't want to do that. But sure. I can't even get them to do my own yard, but I think that's great <laughs> to see that you had the initiative back then to do it. And then what brought you to Koala then? Yeah. So growing up, I was, uh, so, so my family, 
um, I don't really have business owners in my family. And so my, my, I'm originally from Atlanta. So both of uh, my parents worked for Coca-Cola in separate mm-hmm. divisions. And I was always around, um, a, lo- a lot of our family friends had uh, their own businesses. Mm-hmm. And so I got to see the difference between my family and their family. And I really asked myself at a young age, hmm, which path do I want to take in life? Mm-hmm. Do I want to live life on my terms? Or do I want to, you know, be a, a you know, be an employee, a super lo- loyal employee like my parents? My, both my parents worked for Coca-Cola for 20 and 30 years, respectively. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I decided to, to take the path of business ownership. So, so that, was, uh, that was a lot of fun. And so after selling Fleet Clean, I, I knew that I wasn't going to be done. I knew that I was going to start another business. And uh, I just, I didn't know what it was. So a family relative came to me and said, I want to start a business. And at the time I was thinking that it was just going to be a, a local home service business. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, we, we talked about a lot of different things and, and insulation came up and, mm-hmm. you know, at first I, I scratched my head a little bit and I thought insulation is that, I thought that's only for, for new construction work. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, there's a really large service side to insulation. And, and we call that in the industry retrofitting. Mm-hmm. So not to get too off topic here, but I, uh, I, I ended up, uh, we ended up opening a, a local insulation business and, and then realized that uh, just within a few months, we were really successful. So we opened another location in Florida and then another location in a, another part of Florida and ultimately realized that there was a real opportunity with, with repeatable success with our model that we had developed. And so ultimately said, all right, let's, let's franchise it. And let's, uh, let's build a national brand in a really fragmented space. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. <laughs> I mean, to realize that you have your product down to a point that is replicable and can easily be carried on by other people. So can you tell us a little bit more about that business? And I assume you you still have that business, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. So so we started that business up. We built the brand. Uh, so we actually we fully incubated that uh, you know that business from the ground up. So we built the brand uh, and 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 all of the systems and processes and procedures. So. Um, so what Koala does, we're a full service insulation company. So we do spray foam insulation. We do traditional insulation like bats and, and blow in. Um, we do other sorts of energy efficiency upgrades like uh, we, we, we sell and install solar attic fans. We do air sealing. We do insulation removal. We do crawl space, uh, crawl space encapsulations and, and cleanups and, and other such items. So um, it's a it's a fully mobile business. Doesn't require a uh, uh, you know an office, so to speak. Although most franchise partners um, do have some sort of a small warehouse where they park the rigs and and uh, and, and inventory the uh, the small amount of of inventory that they need to do the jobs. And uh, otherwise, it's a it's a relatively simple business that um, straddles the line of a need and a want. Mm-hmm. People want to be more comfortable in their home. They want to save money on their utility bills, so uh, so it's a it's a very needed service. It comes at a modest ticket price for the customer, um, and it provides a real ROI. So it's a it's a do well while doing good kind of business because it provides a, a you know a really real and needed service. Um, the average ticket's around twenty six hundred dollars. We can be in and out of a home normally within you know three to four hours, depending on the size of the job. Some jobs obviously take longer than that. Um, and uh, what we do is just, it's just really noble, right? So there's a lot of different opportunities out there. Um, and this one is, is uh, you know, Koala is a, a business where, you know, most of our franchise partners that are part of the system today um, said that they, you know, they looked at multiple franchises and they chose Koala because it's just a really needed service. And, uh, and, and so, and they just felt like that uh, they were going to be doing, you know, good for their community and their neighbors. And so um, how would you describe your ideal franchisee? Because like, I don't know anything about insulation. Would I need to know that? Or would you train me? What does that look like? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Kristen. So 
We don't have, actually, let me back up. We have one franchise partner that just joined the system here in the last, uh, in the last month and a half or so that has an insulation background. But all of our other 120, give or take, franchise partners do not have a background in insulation. And in fact, most of them do not have a background in construction at all. Mm -hmm. We do have a, fo a few folks that have uh, maybe some project management or architectural experience, maybe some, mm -hmm. some, uh, some engineers. But, um, but most, of, uh, most of the franchise partners in our system today, um, they, they do not have a background in insulation at all. So the business is absolutely learnable. Uh, we have great, you know, great training, uh, great systems and processes. We do monthly roundtable calls. Uh, we send out, uh, as part of the, the opening of a Koala Insulation franchise, we send out a, a field technician from headquarters and spend time on site with the franchisee, uh, making sure that they're comfortable and, and confident with the equipment that we use in the business, ensuring that the, uh, the franchise partners, employees feel confident and comfortable. Uh, so, so we, you know, we help in a, in a, in a, in a really, you know, just broadly speaking, we help in, in so many different ways in terms right. of helping our franchise partners get opened and, and all that. So, so probably some key skills, you know, as I hear you talking, I mean, I would be looking for a candidate for you that has some sales background, somebody who's outgoing, comfortable talking to people, right? Because you're going to go, I assume you're going to be in the home consulting, basically, right? Finding out what some of their issues yeah. are in the home, where they're feeling the draftiness and so on and so forth, right? A hundred percent. And what I like to say is if you're in business, you're in sales. Right. So yeah. you need to be comfortable talking to folks. Yeah. One of the things that you talk about is how important it is for you to be a good mentor to your franchisees in that you kind of measure your own successor or kind of happiness even by how well they do. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've been in business since I was really young. Um, I, I didn't go to college. I didn't want to go to college, even though my parents strongly encouraged me to. And I've just found you know, so much in, uh, in business. And, and, and so really what I, uh, what I desire is for other people to find as much joy and passion in what they do as what I found in, you know, in my career. And yeah. so what, uh, you know, what, what I love about what I do is, is seeing folks and naturally it comes with, with, uh, with the territory of, of franchising that most franchise partners that, that enter the, you know, enter franchising per year, they're first time business owners. And, and so they're, they're nervous, right? That's very common. They're, they're anxious about making a, you know, a large investment and in what we call making a life commitment. And what I love is, uh, is, is, is just, I absolutely adore bringing folks in through that process and, and seeing them be successful for themselves and then finding that passion you know, for, you know, for business ownership, like I have. And, and then, you know, it, 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 it spans beyond that, right? So naturally, they're going to have some peaks and valleys. That's just business ownership. They're going to have good yeah. days and bad days, coaching them through that. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and seeing them be, you know, successful there. And then it goes, it spans the whole gambit, right? Of right. whenever a franchise partner wants to exit their business. Yeah, and they, they built, they built their business to a, to a certain size and scale. Um, they've made good money. They've probably paid the, uh, you know, paid the the initial investment off, made good money along the way, and then they want to sell. And so that's been some of the most joy that I've found is helping yeah. folks become, you know, becoming millionaires, multimillionaires for right. that matter. Um, and that's just that's just so fun to be a part of. That's a, that's absolutely the best part of what I do. Well, I'm really glad that you brought that up because Ray likes to talk about right, Ray, about beginning with the end in mind. That's right. That's right. And that's what a lot of what we do on the show is ease that angst that people are going through when they're thinking, just thinking about starting a business or when they actually get into it. And I know I went through a lot of gut wrenching times as a lot of uh, new business owners did. And, uh, and I'm glad you went, carried that all the way through to the end when uh, you're, you're, some of your, uh, pop, uh, your franchises are thinking about selling their business. That's, that's a, it's a wonderful way of doing, but 
I think one of the things that we need to talk about a little bit now is uh, some of the numbers involved in getting involved in that franchise. That yeah. you have. Sure. So what does it what, what does it take uh, monetarily? Let's put it that way. Sure. So a single territory is uh, is forty nine thousand five hundred dollars. That's the franchise fee. Our average franchise partner in Koala has. Uh, a little over three territories is the average. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to run, you know, give or take $125,000 in, in total franchise fees. Mm -hmm. um, that's combined then, with the 59.5, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. That would be, that would be cumulative for three, three territories. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you define those territories? Yeah. So we define them by 200,000 in population. And how we came up with 200,000 in population is really by looking at the underlying data of 200,000 of population. So that population number is not the end all be all for us. It works in almost 95% of the country, um, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work in, in certain markets like, uh, like New York City, for example. Mm -hmm. So what we look at then is, uh, is the underlying owner occupied uh, number of owner occupied homes, single family homes specifically. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that's what we, we do in our business. Uh, Kristen and I, we yeah. look at uh, qualified households. Yeah. Yep. The difference is like you're saying, so like in the city, you know, they're in condos, a lot of them, right? And so they're not really a qualified candidate for you. Yeah. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's really good for people to understand that, you know, you do look at it to that depth so that you're not selling. Sure especially in urban markets, I think it's really tricky. It is, but what we look at, so, so I'll give you an example. We do have a candidate that's actually in our process right now looking at New York City proper. Mm -hmm. And so all we had to do is, uh, is redraw the territories. And so one territory is actually, you know, several hundred thousand in population to get to 50,000 owner-occupied single-family units. Sure. So we would look at that as just one territory, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, awarding a territory that doesn't produce doesn't do anyone any good. Oh, so, <laughs> so we uh, so we want to make sure that, you know, that territory is going to be you know fully viable and we want someone to go out and absolutely crush it in that area. And so uh, so we look at the population and we look at the underlying data. Okay. I think uh, crushing it is is an understatement because I'm looking at your bio here. It says Koala now serves 75 million of the United States population. I mean, that just kind of pops out of the screen at me. <laughs> is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so where we is have, that uh, to go? Where do you go next? It sounds oh. like you guys are saturated. No, right? No, not at all. We have so many territories available. In fact, so we're we're um, we've we've awarded nearly four hundred territories with about one hundred and twenty five franchise partners since January of twenty, um, and we still have some wonderful markets available. So we have prime territories in in Atlanta, Georgia, in Cleveland, Ohio, in Austin, Texas, uh, San Antonio, Texas. We haven't awarded a single thing in California, although we are getting very close. Okay, how many um, employees got, do you need? <laughs> uh, to run, California is that tricky market, and everybody wants to know, you know, right? Like, how many employees do you have to have for this kind of a thing? Yeah, so so to run a koala, um, we uh, we typically have four uh, four employees total. So okay. two that are that are general laborers that are installing insulation, and then there's going to be a salesperson, and then there'd be an operations manager. And if the franchise partner is looking to be involved in the business on a, on a daily basis, then they could fill one or the other, the operations or the salesperson role. Um, I would say, you know, it's pretty evenly split um, mm -hmm. that uh, we have executive owners that, uh, that have the four, you know, full-time employees um, versus an owner operator that fills one of those two key roles there. So you brought up something very interesting. Um, so the executive owners, they don't have to be in the day-to-day. -day. So tell me what's their co time commitment? We have a lot of people right now are looking at layoffs facing them. They're getting a little nervous, yeah. right? Some people, and I bring up California because I know back when I bought my franchise 16 years ago, she said to me, well, where do you want to live? And I said, what do you mean? And she's like, well, 
if you're going to be the one in franchising, you could open your franchise anywhere. So I'm like, California, hey, wait a minute, right? <laughs> so so that's good to know. So four people, you don't really have huge employee relations issues in the state of California. If somebody wants to get out of, say, Chicago and go move somewhere warmer, good answer to go there. Um, sure. But let's talk about the executive piece. Sure. So look, so much of how much time you have to put into a business is going to be determined by so many other factors, right? So it's going to, it's going to depend on the quality of the talent that the franchise partner hires. Right. It's going to, uh, it's, it's going to be based on, um, you know, how many folks they hire um, mm-hmm. and, and, and then their leadership skills, right? Their ability to build a team and build a culture. And so as far as putting a number to it, you know, I would say, um, uh, you know, I, I would, I would leave that up to, uh, you know, to the, to the incoming franchise partner naturally early on um, you're going to have to spend more time sure. than once you have your business running like a well-oiled machine. But what I can tell you is that we have franchise partners that have now been in the business for, you know, for, for a year, eight months, a year, year and a half that are running the business. Um, they are 95% absentee because they have built a wonderful team. They have, you know, they have an operations manager, they have salespeople, they've, they've mm-hmm. done a good job of cross training. So just, just, you know, otherwise good leadership. Sure. And so, so much of that really depends on the, uh, the franchise partner at the local level. That's awesome. I think that sounds like a really good solution for people who are looking for something that is a little more stable, right? And the great thing, you know, Ray, it's kind of like our business. It's something that you have to have, right? You have to either stay cool or you have to stay warm. People aren't very tolerant of the extremes. And so insulation is the answer to all of that in your homes, right? Absolutely. So, okay, good. And we've got a model that is absentee or all in, which is great. One last thing I wanted to mention that you had stated is um, that you didn't go to college. And I think that's awesome because so many people I did, but I, I still didn't finish. And because I worked for a company that was, you know, you were kind of homegrown and I learned so much more there hands on than I ever would have learned in a, in a book or in a classroom. So I'm excited to see somebody else who's gone out and been very successful in franchising. And I, I wanted to point that out because there's a lot of people I think that feel um, that if you haven't gone that path, you can't get into business for yourself or, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I don't have my degree, but franchising is something that if you've got some business sense and you're savvy at customer service and sales, I mean, what other skills would you say they need to bring to the table if they haven't had an advanced education? Yeah. You know, I would say that, um, you know, my story is probably similar to, a fair number of our most successful franchise partners. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to discredit anyone's background because we have, we have very successful franchise partners from all walks of life, but um, there are, you know, there are folks that, uh, that didn't go to college. Um, you know, what I would say that, that whenever I look across our, our, you know, our, our most successful franchise partners, call it the top 20 or 30% of the system, you know, these are folks that that do the basics extremely well, right? They, number one, they follow the system. Mm-hmm. We don't prescribe a single thing to our franchise partners that doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, we we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't ask them to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so they they know how to follow a process. They know how to follow a system. Um, they're gritty, right? They know when to step back. And say, okay, today's a bad day. Let me, uh, you know, let me just step back from this, and uh, and tomorrow is going to be, you know, a better day. Yes. Um, and 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 then last, I would say is is competitive. Our most successful franchise partners are hyper competitive people. They're always looking to do something that's bigger than themselves, and they want to win. And so they are focused on. Um, you know, they're focused on how can I be the best, right? How can I win? How can I either be the top sales? How can I have the highest gross profit margin in the system? How can I have the best customer service scores? Uh, how can I get the most reviews? 
you know, yeah. whatever the case may be, they're just very, very competitive. And that's something that I identify with. I am hyper competitive. I remember whenever uh, in the depths of the pandemic, you know, here I was on, you know, my Peloton and, and, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm just, just pedaling, you know, my, you know, what off and, and here comes, you know, Jenny, you know, a cool 65 from Boston <laughs> cruising right beside me. And I'm like, Oh my God. And, and so, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, so I just have to, I have to pedal harder. Right. And, yeah. and the same is true. And the same is true in business. And, and especially that's one of the, the secret powers of franchising, in my opinion, is you, you get to have a whole classroom or, or you know, lack of better terms, a, a whole group of people yeah. that are basically going through and experiencing the same things that you are on a daily basis. And so you get to compete with them in a very friendly and fun way. And then when you're having a bad day or you're struggling with something, you have somebody to pick up the phone and call and you yeah. can say, hey, let's talk about this. You know, how, how did you handle this or how would you handle this? And you, and you, all, you ultimately just start making, you know, you make friends and, and then you meet up at the annual conventions and, and different yeah. things like that. And, and it's just, it becomes really, uh, it just, it, it, I don't know. It's just, a, it's just a, one of those superpowers of franchising, as I call it. Well, Scott, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, I'd probably say the best way is, uh, is LinkedIn. So I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So feel free to, to, to pop on there. Um, and, and I'm very responsive. So I'd be happy to, uh, happy to connect. Awesome. Well, hope next time we, we're, we're going to have you on again very soon to talk about Wallaby Windows because you clearly do not stand still. That's right. <laughs> you, you just keep on going out there and getting new models, which is super exciting. We want to thank you for taking time out to be on the show today. Absolutely. And uh, I can't wait to see where you are next time. Ray, do you have anything else for Scott? No, I'm, I'm good. I think, uh, I, you know, Scott, I mean, 15 years old, you started in business. That's I know. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand one of my kids was uh, already chatting and not happy that I said that about mm -hmm. mine. But my daughter is a little different. She's a go getter. But, um, and I do love my kids. So I'm trying to hold them to your standard. And apparently they're going to call me out on it when I get home, which is hysterical. So, <laughs> again, thanks so much for being on. We'll have you on again soon. Uh, this has been a presentation for Koala Insulation. Great information, great opportunity for everybody. Think about somewhere warm to move. We're off. Pay the bills. Thank you, Scott. Awesome. Thanks so much. Hey, franchise owners. How is your local marketing? Do you feel like you could use some help keeping up with your social media posts and comments and reviews? Do you wonder if you could be doing more to attract local customers? Are you able to identify new move-ins to your local area? At Westvine, we help franchisees like you reach more local customers through digital marketing. With daily monitoring, creative content, and ad placement, and customer data intelligence, we'll get your business in front of the people who want your products or services. We also work with franchisors who need an agency to handle the digital marketing for all of their locations. If you're ready to reach more local customers, give us a call at 805-265-5440 or visit us at westvine.com. That's 805-265-5440 or westvine with a y dot com. <laughs> are you as surprised as me? About, yes, I thought it was going to be uh, Karen or something, so I wasn't ready. Well, neither was I, but you know, this is what we do here, right? Well, you know, I uh, I didn't, I started talking after I unmuted as opposed to somebody else I know, so <laughs> it's all busted, good. Busted, that's okay, that's all right. You hey, know, so, go ahead. I was going to say, before, Scott has got me so jazzed, I want to talk about Scott for a minute, because... Yeah. We're going to talk about mentoring. We're going to talk about IFA and further education for franchisees and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I wrote the book uh, and I'm writing the other two books entirely on helping prospects become a franchisee and giving them support as they go through that process. And Scott has me wired for sound right now. I just got to tell you his story. Uh, 
I should write a book about him. That's the bottom line. His story is pretty phenomenal. 15 years old, starting his first business, now started several of them. And he doesn't look much more than 15 right now, I just got to say. I know. that crazy? Well, and I'm thinking, wow, if if Peloton does that for him, maybe that's what's going (laughs) to I got to get one of those and I can start, you know, pacing myself with some late uh, other lady who's like, you know, my sister and... Maybe but, that'll get my butt moving. I don't know. But well, now I want to tell you some notes I made during that thing because my head is hurting. I'm so excited about them. Um, so and, and and you didn't finish college. I didn't finish finish college. We're pretty successful and so on. Scott didn't start Scott the college. Right. Scott didn't start college. He is well spoken. He's professional. He's driven. He's intelligent. Did I mention he's young? I know. So he got started in business early. I want to go back in history and be Scott. That's who I want to be right yeah, now. Yeah. I was but, thinking, you know, I started working when I was 14, but I didn't think to come up with my own business. Yeah. Well, I started when I was five on the farm. So yeah, I had, a, I had a, even a head start on that. So <laughs> we, we, we won't talk about some of the things I was doing back then, but uh, yeah, that's you were burned out by 15, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I had my, uh, I was, I was ready for retirement by then. Um, yeah. But he talked about early in his part, he talked about f- helping others find joy and passion in their career. Man, what a tagline, right? Right. And that's kind of what we all do in trying to help franchisees get going and fi- found, you know, find what we have found in our path as well. And then, uh, and I just got to, I got to touch on this because I'm going to put this up on my wall, Pad- pa- a pedal harder. Yeah. When he was talking pedal about harder. the Peloton story, yeah. he just said, pedal harder. And isn't that the story of franchising and owning your own business and so on? Yeah. Yeah. And when he used the word grit, I'm like, oh my gosh, we talked about that a lot at the yeah. last year, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then before I get started on my part, I just got to give a shout out to Elizabeth too, because, you know, she said something that triggered a thought, you know, how my mind is all over the place. She, she introduced it by uh, saying, Everybody has basically used a mentor or they've been a mentor, right? And I'm yeah. thinking about that and I'm going, well, I fit both of those, not one of them. I fit yeah. both of those. And I think most people do at some level because, you know, when I do keynote speeches and when I'm called in to mentor people and things like that, many times they give me as many ideas through their questions about the next things I'm doing, either in my business or in my next speech or the next book I'm working on or whatever. Right. And they don't even know they've done that. So, you know, they're mentoring me while I'm mentoring them. And it's it's kind of a kind of a river that goes both ways. Yeah. It's, yeah. And they don't even know it, but yeah. that's the way it works. Right. So, yeah. you know, uh, but what I really, you know, that was all cool stuff. And I love what Scott said. And I'm anxious to hear uh, the next thing that he does. And he doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to be creeping him on LinkedIn. So he needs to prepare <laughs> for that. <clears throat> but uh you know, one of the things we want to talk about today, and this fits right in with mentoring and, and education, is the IFA convention that's coming up. And, you know, I quite often start these conversations with, if you are a franchisee and you're not a member, why not? Because it's free and you get, you cannot, in my opinion, because I've been a member for several years, I cannot even estimate how many dollars worth of value I've gotten out of my free membership. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you just factor in the connections you make, both with suppliers and other mentors and so on, that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars for most people. And then, you know, like the convention, I can tell you because I'm a part of it, um, we are going to have the best educational path for franchisees we've ever had mm-hmm. this convention. And it's going to keep growing because we've made a kind of a global commitment to continue to build the side of IFA that's related to franchisees. So if if we have listeners out there that are franchisees and they haven't signed up yet, they need to at least go online and look at the agenda and some of the things that are coming. I mean, I was we had a planning session this morning for three of the um, uh, forums that we're going to have, mm-hmm. uh, and they're just phenomenal. I mean, the one that I'm running is on supply chain and labor issues in the world today. I was and, at that. Yeah, and that I, I cannot think of a franchisee that couldn't get value out of that. I can't, I can't, yeah, can't even think of it. And you know, when we look at like Scott Greenberg is one of our uh, uh, one of our people on the panel 
who wrote mm-hmm. the wealthy franchisee. What a phenomenal asset to our panel. And, and we've got just some really good people on there. And then they've got this guy that owns a couple of great clips in Iowa that's going to be talking about what they did to you know, <laughs> correct those problems. But uh, so I, I do want people to know about that because uh, if, if you haven't checked into it before, now's the time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, unfortunately, the early bird registration for the event is past. But the price, if you consider how many days and how much information you get, it's actually very reasonable. I was looking at it again because I'm very interested in um, helping get the word out to franchisees how critical being a part of that is. I mean, everything from fighting for labor standards, as we saw out in California and here in Illinois, we'll see what happens. But there's all kinds of different stuff that IFA gets involved in. So I think that's great. Let's go ahead. I was gonna well, say, I was just say- the mentorship, right? The mentorship that IFA provides. Yeah, the, the mentorship. And and you and I always talk about how you become a franchisee um, and you're you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Yes. And so what many franchisees don't understand is they can get value and education and mentoring from people that are franchisees and other brands. So when you become with IFA, uh, yeah. become involved with IFA, you've got access to literally probably hundreds of thousands of franchisees out there from different brands that are involved in some way, shape or form that are happy to help you out. Yeah. So it doesn't end with just a few things. And if we just look at the convention, Kristen, sure. and you've been there, so you know what I'm talking about. Yep. What's the value of the uh, of the trade show? Oh, my gosh. You know, it, what was really interesting to me is that you stumble upon vendors that you had no idea existed. Now, some of them you can get your franchisor turned on to if they haven't heard of them or whatnot. Um, but some of them are built for size. I'll tell you the thing, you know, Karen and I talk about all the time how um, I'm fine with numbers, but it's not my favorite thing, right? Like I just, I'm a people yeah. person, I'm a visionary. Um, and so I was impressed at how many um, franchises are out there or services, service vendors that are out there to help franchisees with their books. Sure. Yeah. And beyond like, you know, paychecks or something like that, that's just a payroll system, but really right. all accounting firm feel folks that are, are helping. And I think that was, that was really great. Um, and obviously that's where we met John Hayes and Titus Center and a lot of really great people that we've had on the show. Well, yeah. And, uh, and again, expanding your horizons, because, you know, we, we focus mainly on, I mean, that was just one component. I think the, the cost of going might be paid back just by going to the, the trade show. Mm-hmm. Um, some other things that are being added this year are dine arounds for first time attendees that are franchisees. And <clears throat> they're creating another group for first time attendees that are going to get a chance to rub shoulders with some of us that have been around for a while and learn mm-hmm. about all the things to be involved in. And, you know, you talk to franchisors from different brands and get a chance if you're thinking about someday branching out into a, you know, diversifying with another brand, you get to meet them. But at the base of it's all around mentoring and education for franchisees uh, in some way, shape or form. And uh, some of my best connections are people that, you know, own multiple brands and own, you know, multiple locations and they're just like me. And so them sharing, you know, their advice and their counsel and their mentoring and things like that generally for free is, is again, worth thousands and thousands of dollars. So, um, you know, my take and Karen and you and I, we all, and Ray in particular, we all run in the same circles with mentoring and, and, uh, continuing to educate yourself. And there is just not a better, better opportunity than IFA overall, but certainly the convention is a great lead in. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, Jerry, I really appreciate that. I hope that um, for those of you out there listening that are in franchising today, that you do make a valiant effort to get out to Vegas here at the end of the month to check out the convention. Um, You mentioned Scott Greenberg, who's amazing. He is going to be on next week's show, if I'm not mistaken, um, to do a a co-hosting gig with me, which would be a lot of fun. He's an amazing author, speaker, speaker. just overall great human being. So that will be um, something for you all to watch out for. And Jerry can't wait because hopefully we'll connect in Vegas and we know Andrew is going to be out there. So we should have a lot of um, 
new information to share and lots of photos and videos and fun stuff like that. So it's going to be great. I would invite anybody to come out. And if you come, look me up because I'll be happy to introduce you to people and show you around. Kristen, it's been great. Advice from a million dollar mentoring team. And two, how about interviews from franchise professionals and influencers? And number three, how about getting some professional tips on buying, growing, and exiting your franchise? Join us on Pillars of Franchising to learn about the secrets of franchising success. You can find us at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, wherever you listen. Hello, Karen Kimsey Sword, and welcome to the Karen Kimsey Sword segment, everyone. Hello, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How are you? Are you excited to talk about mentoring today? I am indeed. It's one of my favorite topics. I think it's one of those where um, people don't don't use it much. They don't use mentors as much as they should. I agree. And uh, since that seems to be a theme running through the show today, that, that common thread of, of mentoring and what it looks like... Um, I know you have a lot of experience with that and some recommendations. I think when you say to yourself as a, as a business person, I want a mentor, not everybody knows how to do that. Not everybody knows what it is. Not everybody knows how to go about navigating something like that. So what, what is your experience with mentorship and what would you tell people? Okay. Well, first it's even getting clear on what it is, you know, Mm -hmm. because I've noticed, you know, I do a lot of coaching as well. That's a lot of what I, what I do for, for a living. And, you know, people are like, well, mentoring, there's coaching, there's consulting, you know, really being clear on what is when you want to find a mentor or what is a mentor. Mm -hmm. And, and a mentor really is someone you're looking for someone who has knowledge. They have some insights. They've had experience in key areas where they can actually help guide you, give you, give you that advice, you know, whereas coaching is more where they'll ask questions and, you know, try to get you to do a self-discovery. I mean, mentorship really is is someone saying, here's what I know. Here's what I've experienced. They can ask questions, but they're going to be able to provide those, you know, more more of that, more of that guidance in key areas. Yeah. Well, and that's a great distinction because they're very, two two very different expectations. And if you're not getting what you think you're getting, you're going to be disappointed in in what you've got. Exactly. Right? You exactly. And you'd be like, I need some information. Why do you keep asking me all these questions? I need <laughs> you to help me. <laughs> so how do you know what kind of mentor you need? Because, uh, you know, when you're searching for a mentor, um, you people may have strengths in different areas of, of right. business and experience and life and those sorts of things. So how do you know what you're looking for? Well, yeah, 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 it's funny because, you know, people be like, what do you do? You just go, like, go up and go, hey, do you want to be my mentor? Which is kind of, that's kind of hard to do, right? And then, and then many people, when they even ask that, they don't even know what they want it for. So mm-hmm. number one would be, be really clear on why do you want a mentor? What are the key reasons, you know, you would want a mentor? For example, you know, we see a lot of like people that are really looking into franchise, franchising. Mm-hmm. They want to be a franchise. And they're like, okay, that's a great reason to get a mentor. Because many people, if you haven't done franchising or been in franchising or been a franchise, you know, franchisee, you don't know what you don't know. So that's a great time. So then what happens is you're like, okay, well, then I know I want to do that. You know, I want someone to help provide me guidance, whether it's in the selection process, you know, kind of where, you know, different, different places of where you are. So that's the first step, even knowing kind of the reasons and kind of where you are in your journey. The second would be even to then, once you even know that, then it's being really clear on understanding kind of where you are, kind of doing like a, a skills inventory mm-hmm. and really understanding, first of all, what, what are your strengths? So understanding, first of all, what a franchise even kind of is, what it requires, some of the skill sets it requires, and then taking an inventory of yourself to say, what, what are my strengths? What am I really good at? What do I know? And then it's, what, am I, what am I, if you want to call it weaknesses or areas that I'm not as strong? So understanding that and taking a look at that and saying, I really need to find someone who's going to help me with this knowledge, help me to leverage my strengths, and then help help kind of almost, if you want to call it backfill and give me guidance in the areas where I'm not as strong. Um, I mean, one of, the, one of the things that I'm not as strong uh, in the whole financial acumen, I mean, I get it. I know it. I know enough. But, you know, it's not one where that's not my huge strength. Mm-hmm. So I have a mentor who mentors me in the whole the whole financial area. And I've learned so much from them. 
And by me just being real to say, this is an area I'm not that good at and having them give me some guidance and meeting with me along the way. And it's, it's, it's really helped me grow. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, you know, you tend to do less well at things that you, you don't like also. So finding a mentor who fills in the gaps for you in your areas where you're either not as strong or you really hate the work, right? Right. Exactly. (laughs) is, Is what you're saying. That would be an important thing to do, but also in the franchising space, being a business owner is one thing. If you've been a business owner, being an employee in corporate America is another thing. Um, a lot of these things might apply differently in franchising. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've been, I've actually been both a franchisee and a business owner. So mm-hmm. I actually have had experience with both. And even though it's, there's some similarities, there are some differences. So understanding that franchising world and what happens, there's some really key things that would be important to know and understand. Um, so it's almost like, again, you don't fall into any pitfalls early on and you have, and you have that knowledge and it's not like a, someone's going to come along and just dump all that knowledge. It really is as you go along and as you enter all the different stages of franchising from just looking for one all the way through actually buying one and then running a franchise and then all the way to the exit piece. I think that's oh, really yeah. important. Yeah, absolutely. And franchising is a little bit of a different language in the business world. So if you're getting a mentor outside of that space for a franchise business, you're not going to have the same experience as if you've had someone who's been through the process from beginning to end or is, right. you know, years into it and successful, like, you know, the Jerry's and the Karen's and the Ray's that we have, yeah. the Jerry and the Kristen's and the Ray's and the Karen's. <laughs> All of the above, all of the all above. Of the above. <laughs> um, so how do you go about finding a mentor? Because it's easy to say, I really need a mentor and I, I know what I need my mentor to help me with. Right. What, how would you recommend people go about acquiring one? Well, there, there are several different ways. I mean, first of all, it could be someone in your network. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we all have, you know, you know, we have different people that were like, oh, wait a minute. I think, I think this person, I think this person runs a certain type of franchise. So that, that's a, that's a great thing is to find, find them and talk with them. And, and actually, again, making sure you're clear on, you know, the why understanding where your strengths are, your areas. So then when you do approach them, you know, you have to approach them on kind of the why. So it's not, it doesn't feel awkward, you know, and almost like kind of practicing. What does that look like? So I think it looking into your, your network, that's really key. Mm -hmm. There's also a second piece that a lot of people really don't think to look at is, is that um, they they really want to take a look at the whole professional organization. There are a lot of professional organizations and different groups out there where you can tap into and they actually have mentors. Um, mm-hmm. For example, Pillars. I mean, we do yeah. this. Imagine and <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And it's not like, again, you just get thrown a mentor. It really is making sure there's a match. There's got to be a chemistry and a match on skills and people. So it's making sure that if you go that route, that you under that you understand that, and then you just select the right one. But I think a lot of people don't think to tap into to those resources. Yeah, agreed. And you know, one thing I think that's a simple a simple answer in this that I've I've learned is just ask. You know, when you see somebody who has what you want, I have one child who's extremely good at that. He would get when he was applying to college, he would contact people he knew who went there and ask them how they got in, how they got scholarship money, how they did all these things. Um, a lot of people want to be mentors and have just are looking for somebody to mentor. So always be willing to ask and certainly exactly. be willing to reach out to pillars. Exactly. And, and if someone says no, you move on and go to someone else. Right. But it just it's the, the, the wealth of knowledge mm-hmm. that you're going to get from having a mentor is 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 invaluable. And, and I find that it helps people um, not. Um, how do I want to say this? It kind of helps you not get into some key areas or pitfalls or whatever you want to call it. It, They're like, whoa, whoa, you might want to think about this or that and Mm -hmm. help you ahead of time versus going down the path and saying, oh my gosh, I've got these problems. So then you're, you're at a point of a deficit. So instead you're being more proactive and thinking through and having somebody mentor you. Yeah. Somebody who's been there and done that and can tell you what not to do, right? Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, Karen, thank you so much. This is so helpful. And I think if if anybody out there is looking for a mentor, absolutely reach out to us. We can, we have mentoring opportunities with pillars. We can get you in touch with Karen and get some recommendations and you can reach us at your dream at pillarsoffranchising.com. Thanks.
As usual, thank you for joining Pillars of Franchising. We appreciate every single one of you. Um, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors, the Titus Center for Franchising at Palm Beach Atlantic University. You can find them on the college's website. Also, Franchise Show 247, which can be found at franchiseshow247.com. And we couldn't do it without our sponsors and we appreciate their support. Don't forget, we love to have call-in guests. Our number to call in is 323-580-5755. That is 323-580-5755. If you have questions for our guests or for any of our Million Dollar Mentors, we welcome you to call in at any time on the show. We will do our very best to answer your calls. Stay tuned, more coming up. Uh, and it's time for the sunset session. We'd like to thank you all for joining us on the show today. And thank you to our guest, Scott Marr of Koala Insulation. I hope you found the show to be extremely valuable. And if you didn't get the message, go out and find a mentor to help you in this journey. As always, we appreciate all of the Pillars of Franchising team, contributors Ray Pillar, Jerry Akers, Laura Liss, Karen Kinsey Sward, as well as producers Fred McMurray and Elizabeth Dunham. I am Kristen Shelmetzi. This has been a, another episode of the Pillars of Franchising. Don't forget, we are your resource for franchising success, and the dream starts here. See you next week. Pillars of, pillars of, pillars of.